you can see on the left here the icon of of the holy fathers that uh the choros the the choir of the kolivadis fathers quite a quite a lot of them are considered kolivadis although there is a core group which we're going to look at which are mainly responsible for the ecclesiological reflections that we're going to be examining uh, but let's look at who is in this choir of of saints uh, the Kolivadis fathers, these pillars of orthodoxy. So, first of all, you may not know that we have a day dedicated to their celebration and a service in Greek. I don't think it exists in English. Maybe it does. Uh, it's um, the bright Saturday after the Feast of Pascha. We commemorate all the Holy Fathers of the Kolivadis movement. Let's just go through them really quick. Neophytos Kafsokalivitis who is considered the initiator of the movement, of the group of Holy Fathers who were working. Now, you've got to remember the context, historical context here. This is the 18th century. This is the time that is perhaps the, 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 the most intense in terms of Western heterodox propaganda and proselytism in the Orthodox East. It's also a time of great Westernization that's going on in especially Russia uh, under Peter the Great and Catherine the Great. And, and so there's a lot of pressure going on that's been building for decades and even for centuries uh, for the Orthodox to simulate culturally, politically with the West. Now, of course, a lot of Orthodox are underneath the Ottoman Empire and the Turks, so they're looking to the West already in hope on a political level of some kind of eventual freedom from the Turkish yoke. So there's a, just a tremendous amount of pressure and a lot of things going on to, 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 of course, the enemy of our salvation is working to undermine the holy tradition. And so there, when we talk about a movement, we should not be mistaken and think this is some kind of renovationist or renewal movement. We don't have, really don't have those things in the Orthodox Church. What we have is a continuation of the Holy Fathers and there are definitely members or even local churches that can veer off and become more infected by the world or by the heterodox mentality of the day. Uh, but there are always Holy Fathers who stand and, as it were, call people back to the, uh, to the, to the path uh, uh, of salvation, uh, even if they're in the church. So there's this struggle going on always uh, against secularization and against the... Uh, non-orthodox heterodox uh, mentality and so these the, these these holy fathers on monathos who are continuing of course the holy tradition of the fathers and the ascetics from saint gregory palamas a few centuries earlier uh and all the saints up until their day neophytos lived from 1689 to 1784 so it gives you a time period of the beginner one of the first, and then we have really all the way into the late 19th uh, century, we have those who are considered Kolivadis fathers. Uh, another great uh, and important figure is Venerable, the Venerable uh, Saint Athanasius of, Par of Paros, the Parios, uh, 1722 to 1813, so almost the entire 18th, 18th century. Much, of, much of, the, of the events that we're going to talk about and the things that are going to be discussed tonight are going, going to take place from the almost exactly in the middle of the century, 1750, all the way through the end and to the early 1800s, 1810. Uh, St. Barrio is considered a teacher of the nation, the, the people in this part of the world, the Greek-speaking people in this part of the world, uh, and a, a very erudite and learned man who wrote a number of texts, one of them on the uh, Western Enlightenment and philosophy, uh, which if God wills and we we have the manpower, we will translate it into English eventually. It's our goal. Of course, St. Cosmas Atelos, also during this time period, a renewal or going from Mount Athos and, and, and preaching and teaching throughout the uh, uh, the, the nation here, uh, the country of what, what will become the country of Greece after the revolution. Uh, and... Um, uh, Makarios Notaras, uh, one of the great family, uh, the Roman uh, descendant of the great family of Romans who uh, were in, in the uh, Senate. Uh, he was the Archbishop of Corinth just for a few years, actually. Most of his life was spent as an ascetic in Chios 
and other places on Mount Athos and working with St. Nicodemus, the Hagiorite, in bringing us all of these wonderful uh, additions and texts that we have, which we'll mention in a moment. Uh, so he was uh, a bishop, the, the only major figure of the Kolibadi's fathers besides St. Nectarios of Egina, later on, who was a bishop. Uh, and uh, very important, his uh, patronage to the movement, I think, uh, for, for a variety of reasons. Uh, St. Nikiforos of Chios, uh, the Venerable Godbearer Nifon, the New, uh, 1736 to 1809, uh, who uh, was a um, Cenobite and uh, a great monastic father. A holy uh, New Higher Martyr Parthenios, uh, 1805, he was martyred. Um, Cyril, the new of Paros, a bit later than uh, Saint pa Saint uh, Athanasius. Saint Athanasius spent most of his later part of his life in, in Hios, never went back to Paros. Saint Cyril uh, was an amazing wonder worker, as you see on the screen here. Just a few things about him: endowed with the gift of foresight and with the ability to work miracles, he made the sign of the cross over a snake and it died. He traveled on his monastic ca cassock which he spread out on the sea. He struck a rock in the arid monastery of St. George and Gus Forth, a uh, spring, Gus Forth, which is still running to this day, just a few of the amazing things that associated with that saint. A lot of, a lot of, a lot of these saints are unknown to most people in the West, uh, even Orthodox. So it's very good to have this opportunity to bring them and showcase them. St. Pais Vyskovsky, who's very important. And we're going to do a, a, a future podcast, uh, which will include a lot of very interesting and wonderful information about St. Paisios. Of course, he lived on the Holy Mountain, and then he went to Moldavia, and he started the, the tremendous monastic movement in, uh, in in Romania, which then ended up through translation work to reach Russia, and really was the spring which, for which which bring uh, helped bring forth the great flowering of monastic life in the 19th century in Russia especially in Optina and other places where they were translating uh, the books that he had brought uh, into Russian from Slavonic and, and, and publishing them. So uh, St. Paisos also plays a role here in tonight's uh, presentation. Uh, Saint, the Holy Colivadis uh, Gapios and Porfirios, uh, Arsenios of Paros a little bit later in the 19th century, Parthenios of Hios again a bit later, but definitely in the tradition of the Colivadis. Uh, we said in the St. Nectarios, many people don't consider him a Holy Father, but actually he's coming very much in the tradition of those same Holy Fathers, St. Nicholas Planas, and St. Savas, the new of Kalimnos, another great saint, ascetic uh, in the early 20th century. So this is the considered the, the choir of the Holy Fathers, uh, uh, the Holy Holy Father's Fathers. Now let's let's just talk about four of them that are particularly important for our interpretation of the canons and our understanding of the, the questions at stake in terms of ecclesiology. We talked about Neophytos Kafsokalivitis, who was the initiator of the movement. Just a few words about him. He was the first head of Athoniada, which is a school that was established in the mid-19th, in the mid-18th uh, century on Mount Athos uh, during the dark period of Turkish uh, persecution and restriction of education. And he was succeeded by uh, other renowned figures, including St. Athanasius of Paros, who later became the head uh, in, uh, of, of the same school. Uh, he was the author of the first version, or a version, of On Frequent Communion, which is a very important text that came out of this period. Uh, and he, he traveled quite a bit and, and taught after leaving the Holy Mountain, being persecuted and being driven away and slandered because of his uh, confession of the faith uh, by the anti Colivadis. Uh, the westernized, uh, generally speaking, westernized and 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 uh, infected with something similar to the Barlamian uh, in, uh, perception of things. Uh, that's that's the only way you can explain their 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 dedicated war against all of the Kolivadis fathers on Mount Athos. And uh, he spent the lot, most of his life, the end of his life, in uh, Romania, teaching there. Now, also, St. Athanasius Parios, or, or St. Athanasius Parios, uh, 
he was highly educated, a renowned teacher and defender, and went to school in, in Smyrna and on Athos and uh, I think in Constantinople. He was asked to teach in Constantinople, but declined. He was asked to take up, take up the main school there. Uh, he wasn't ordained until he was 55 years old. He spent much of his first years uh, in academia. He taught uh, after Athenada in Thessaloniki and then in Chios, and he died at the age of 90, one of the oldest uh, of, the, of the fathers. Uh, St. Macarius of Corinth, we mentioned. Uh, again, he just spent a few years and then was a ascetic scholar and supporter of St. Nicodemus and the Contifadi's fathers, responsible for some very important texts that we'll talk about momentarily. St. Bais Veroskovsky, the Slavic voice of the Contifadi's, uh, very much in the tradition of the uh, Philokalia, of course, he was the translator and in, in many ways originator of the text in the Slavic world. And he was the, the great renowned elder and spiritual father in Romania. And he was importantly, we'll get to this probably in a, in a separate podcast. I wish I could have gotten to it tonight, but it's just too much. He was a co-worker of Dorotheos Vulismas, Vulismas, uh, who was the great supporter of the Kolibadis fathers. And we'll talk about him because he's been brought up recently uh, through some research that some academics have done, and they've uh, brought to bear some interesting points, which some of them are mistaken, and we're going to correct those. Uh, St. Nicodemus the Hagurite, of course, the boast and glory of the Orthodox Church is Monk, Monk Moses, uh, the recently reposed uh, but well-known uh, writer in Monathos put it, he wrote many texts on the Holy Fathers and Manathos. Uh, you can see here the three volumes that we published in English by St. Nicodemus, his Exima Logitarian, his Confession uh, of Faith, and his Concerning Frequent Communion, all of those which we hope to bring out again in circulation very soon. It's been much too long uh, out of circulation. Uh, if you count up everything that he wrote and did in all the versions, it's about 100 works. Uh, which is pretty phenomenal if you consider that he only lived 60 years. And so he was only really producing 30 of those years. He became a monk, I think, in around his late 20s and uh, so uh, in mid-20s. And so, you know, just a tremendous, an amazing amount of work in such a sh short amount of time. Uh, some of the major works that we should all be familiar with, or most of us should be familiar with most of these texts, is the Philokalia, of course, the Evergetinos, very important text for monastics and for lay people for the spiritual life, collection of desert fathers, uh, saints, and teachings. Concerning for communion, which you mentioned, the works of St. Simeon, new theologian, very important. Uh, anybody who says that the that St. Nicodemus was westernized, and just do not understand what's going on in the, in the 18th century and what he's all about. I mean, anybody who can bring all these works to bear, the Philokalia, the the uh, uh, works of St. Simeon Theologian, St. Gregory Palamas, which he, he unfor unfortunately was lost, but he did, he did the works of St. Gregory Palamas. I mean, such, such, a, such a figure, such a powerhouse, spiritual powerhouse, obviously is not going to be taken in by the various the errors of the West. And, and we have to understand what he's doing and where he's working in the context, and we can very easily explain why some things come across as, as Western or as scholastic. Exima Logitarian, uh, Theotokarian, a uh, collection of, uh, for the Mother of God, prayers that are used in church on Mount Athos and all around the world. Unseen warfare, uh, numeral theology, spiritual exercises, uh, the um, complete works, uh, of, as I said, Trangiri Palamas, the Christoethia, which was translated as the Christian morality, uh, which is exists in English now, uh, Ephcologion, the Garden of Graces, the Dialogues of Barsanufius, the, the Synaxarian, all the volumes of the Synaxarian, just an amazing amount of work. Uh, the uh, uh, Alpheto, uh, Alphavetos, <laughs> I can't pronounce that, of Saint Meletius, the Neo Eclog. Eclogion and Yortodromion and the New Ladder and the on and on and on it goes on and on. Just an amazing, amazing, unique saint in the history of the church. Again, the boast and the glory of the Orthodox Church. And so we're going to see why his 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 views on the whole question of ecclesiology and baptism are so important to the church and why it 
it's debated, right? People want to claim him for, for themselves, their own position, but it's no question, there's no doubt about his position on these whole topics, as we'll see tonight.